FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome, and you are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Carrie Lutz, and it's September 24th, 2018. Well, lots going on in precious metals. Uh, gold uh, finished Friday below the magical 1200 mark. How many Fridays is gold going to be driven down below 1200? Well, I don't know, but now it's back over 1200. It's Monday morning, and it's up on big, big news in the industry. But first, as always, we urge you to to write us an email to be a part of the show, to join in the fun. If, you're, if your email is good enough, I'll read it on air. And if it's really outstanding, I'll have you on the show to talk about the points you raised. So again, in case you forgot, I don't know how you could, the email address is kl at kerrylutz.com. So in the gold space, we have the largest precious metals merger, probably on record. Barrick, largest uh, gold mining company, and understand they don't explore, they don't look for gold anymore, they just drill uh, reserves. And that's what they've been living off of, buying Rand Gold for, and it's a transaction valued at around $18 billion. This is kind of the opening shot that we were looking for to fire off the next wave of mergers and acquisitions in the juniors. At least it potentially could be, but somebody who knows more about the topic has probably forgotten more about the topic than I will ever know. Uh, Ned Schmidt is with us. Uh, You find him the Value View Gold Report and the Agri-Food Value View. Ned, hey, welcome back. Good morning, Gary. Hey, Be so on a positive day. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. I was kind of I went to sleep last night. Gold was down a couple of bucks the ounce. And then I woke up this morning and it was up 6 bucks. So, you know, you just never know what's going to happen here, do you? Well, if you lead a clean life, Gary, you <laughs> will be rewarded. Uh, well, I guess I'm in trouble then. <laughs> yeah, hey, no, the, emerger, the emerger announcement, I, I don't know that we want to give it too much, but I think we need to give it a lot of its due. Is, is it, it, it's going to change the psychology in the industry. What it's doing, and the psychology I'm talking about, is the gold stocks and gold have been seen as something to short not something you buy. And this morning, the short sellers in the gold stocks woke up to some pain, not something they've been expecting. But the gold stocks have been strengthening now for several weeks. The gold stocks, and I measured them here using the ETFs, they hit a low on the 11th of this month. We're we're basically in the second week of a rally. And I think that this merger will add, I don't know if it's going to add a positive psychology all of a sudden, but at least it dampens the negative psychology. And that's what's important. Right. And people are going to be looking for the next one. And I don't know who that is, Gary. I'm well, sorry. Hey, there was, I wish I could tell you. You know, there were bids out there for Nevson, okay? And, uh, you know, they... Uh, they rejected the two bids. I think it was from Lundeen, the uh, bids, but they rejected them. And Nevson has been in purgatory since I got involved in precious metals. And I mean, not that I'm involved in it, but since I started doing the show, it paid this uh, wacky dividend. Um, I even talked to the guy uh, in Vancouver one time who uh, who was the CEO or who was behind it, whatever. And um, then they bought this huge, uh, huge project in the, uh, I want to say it's Slovakia, which might be, but in any event, they buy this huge project and what do they do? They had this 5% dividend, they cut the dividend and then the stock tanks because all the dividend investors who wanted a gold play dumped the stock. Now it's come back up. 
and they've increased their dividend, but they could have, they had no debt, this company, zero debt. They had like 150 million in the bank. They could have easily just borrowed half of it and done it on a short term loan and kept their dividend. The last thing you ever do on a stock that trades as a dividend play is, is cut your dividend, right? It's madness. So point is that, uh, that the M and a activity will likely pick up. It might not be tomorrow. It might not be this week. It might be next month. Maybe it's six months from now, but I think this is the bellwether of what's to come in the space. So this could be a situation where the gold stocks go up, even though the price of gold maybe stays the same or goes up a little. Well, what it's going to do too is it's going to encourage other people that have not been thinking about a merger to say maybe a merger might be something that helps us, you know, and, and that these two companies combined can, can shed a lot of excess expenses. If that, and that's what they, at least they say they're going to do. Yeah. To some extent and, it's and, true, but it'll encourage other people to look at this. And so you don't definitely do not want to be short gold stock right now. And 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 you know what else is, is that these stocks have been dogs for so long. It's the only value play left in the market. Some of them have got, you know, that's true. I, I, I follow a handful of gold stock and and these two Barrick and Rand gold, I've been carrying, last month I had them at a 40% discount to their value. Wow. And so, yeah, and, and value is the eye beholder. That's mid-guesstimate. Yeah, but, but you can base it on reserves, come up a, a dollar per ounce, um, you know, an estimate what the reserves in the ground are worth, the ones that are actually uh, obtainable and economically uh, feasible, right? So I think I think it's fair it's probably a fair price, but of course the market's not paying for it. So you're wrong and the market's right. <laughs> That's right. And, and one of the things is it allows them to do, Kerry, is it this merger gives them the excuse, close or write off anything they've been reluctant to close or write off. Yeah, beautiful it, point there. Everything but the this, kitchen sink. That's right. You're going to write it, everything you got off which puts you in a good position to go forward. Yeah, great so point. So in other words, once you write off all the garbage, your earnings will look better in the future. And taxes, they get to, they get to really kill their tax rate for the first year or two uh, with all of those uh, write-offs. So their cash flow will potentially you know, advance in a major way, but their tax bill will take a couple of years to catch up with them. And uh, so for these big companies, there's so there's so many reasons why they do mergers that really have nothing to do with operational efficiencies or even um, savings to be realized as a result of the merger. There's a lot more that goes into it than that. Correct. Now, I, I want to back up to something a minute ago, Kerry. I, I think the backdrop on gold is a lot better, too. I mean, we put in a bottom in gold on the 16th of August, which is over a month ago. Right. And, and gold has done well since the 16th of August. And, and people never expect bottoms. I and mean, now we've got a bottom in gold, <laughs> a bottom in the gold stock, which yeah. is not supposed to happen. Everybody was supposed to buy Amazon and Apple so cool. and never buy gold or gold stocks. Well. That's changing this morning. Mm-hmm. And the dollar, normally we would expect the dollar to strengthen this week. The Federal Reserve is going to raise rates on Wednesday, right. the 26th. Rumor has I mean, this it. Is, Rumor this has is it. number eight. <laughs> yeah. Seven, to- seven times before, they have rallied the dollar on, on uh, mm-hmm. the Federal Reserve. And it's not happening this morning. Mm. There's other things going on. And, and in fact, the, the two of the strongest currencies are the Mexican peso and the Canadian dollar. Because they're going to get a trade deal with Uncle Sam first. Mm-hmm. 
Well, so, uh, the then, Canadians might if uh, Justin learns how to behave himself and, uh, and Trump doesn't have to bitch slap him again. <laughs> the Canadian government has a problem. It, 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 they just don't understand trade. And mm -hmm. uh, I guess every country is proud of themselves, but the Canadian government may have an exaggerated view of itself. <laughs> it doesn't. <laughs> uh, Justin is like, the guy is a lightweight man child. And he's going up against Trump and uh, he really doesn't have a clue. So it, the question is, does Canada want to want to maintain and continue to have an auto industry or not? Because if they don't, then just don't do business with Trump. And your largest industry is going to go kaput. So he's really between a rock and a hard place because he'd like to be uh, pushing, uh, you know, uh, lesbian rights and and uh, minimum wages and climate change and, uh, you know, a real greeny agenda. And Trump is just not having it. So if he wants a deal, he's going to have to make it. So that's going to be an interesting thing. But I think in the final analysis, Canada has no no choice. Uh, they can't really go to China and have China bail them out of this. China's, you know, trying to figure out what to do with Trump themselves. So what are they going to do? <laughs> anyway, so so the whole complexion, this could be a game changer in gold for for the next couple of years, because, you know, the question is, can the stocks drive up the price of gold or does the price of gold drive up the stocks or is both of them or both of these scenarios going to take place at the same time? Well, the gold stocks, what's going on with the gold stocks is more obvious. In other words, uh, traders have the, these two symbols on their, on their desk. They've got mm -hmm. GDX and GDXJ on their trading screen. And remember, a lot of people will buy the gold stocks because they can't buy the precious metal. If I run a mutual fund, it's an equity mutual fund. Great point. I can't buy gold. I can't buy it in, in either bullion farm or in the ETF farm. Yeah. But I can buy gold stocks. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's where we're going to see this demonstration of better psychology. And that will feed on to gold. Yeah, I think you're right. I definitely think you're right about it. And uh, we're just going to have to see how fast this trend picks up. You know, when a trend starts in Wall Street, sometimes it could take years to percolate through. And other times it just happens like before you even knew that a trend was forming, it's there. And we don't know which it's going to be here, but certainly uh, something is going on here that you should be aware of. Hey, so Ned, uh, we got to take a break for a word from our sponsor. I mean, Ned, you've hired people in the past. Hiring is the most difficult decision, isn't it? Oh, it is. <laughs> you can make a mistake doing that. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, so, Ned, you know that the right hire can make such a huge impact on your business. And that's why it's so important to find the right person as quickly as you can. But the question is, where do you go to find that person? You can try posting on the job boards, but you're never really sure that the right person sees your job. Instead, you want to find the right person who will help you grow your business. And that's why you need to use LinkedIn. You know, LinkedIn is the world's largest professional network. People go to LinkedIn every day to grow professionally and most importantly, to discover amazing job opportunities. And 70% of the U.S. workforce is already there. LinkedIn Jobs matches people to your role based on more of who they really are, their skills, their interests, and even how open they are to a new opportunity. This way, your job gets seen by more of the right people. Most LinkedIn members haven't recently visited the top job boards, but 9 out of 10 members are open to new opportunities. So you can only reach them on LinkedIn. That's why a new hire is made every 10 seconds using LinkedIn. 
and businesses rate LinkedIn 40% higher than job boards at delivering quality candidates. So hurry on over to linkedin.com slash FSN and you'll get $50 off your first job post. That's linkedin.com slash FSN and get $50 off your first post. Again, linkedin.com slash FSN. Of course, terms and conditions will apply. All right. So, Ned, looking at our agricultural sector, uh, what do you see in there? Well, the big problem we've got is still with Chinese tariffs. Mm -hmm. And the Chinese tariffs are rearranging the trade flows. In other words, it was automatic that China bought grains from the United States, primarily soybeans. Mm -hmm. And those trade flows are being rearranged. So the system is still trying to adapt to that. But it does look like we may be putting the lows in in the grain prices. China has a problem that it cannot buy all the soybeans it needs from Brazil. If it buys the whole Brazilian crop, it's still not going to be happy. And so the Europeans, on the other hand, are starting to buy from the United States. They told Trump they'd buy, and they have been. The other thing we've got creeping in the background is African swine flu. Mm. African swine flu is a deadly virus to pigs. They die within a week. Oh, really? I, I didn't yeah, hear about it, this. <laughs> life expectancy, once they get it, is huh. about a week. Yeah. There is no vaccine for it. Remember, mm. this is a virus, so antibiotics don't work on it. Right. It's started in Africa, spread to, to Eastern Europe, Romania, mm -hmm. those kind of places. Then it leapfrogged all the way across Russia into China. Mm. China is the biggest pork consumer in the world. Correct. And what's happened is the, there's two things you do when you get this virus. You start killing hogs and you don't let them move. So right now, in China, you can't ship hogs from a sick province to a healthy province. Mm -hmm. And that's causing shortages. The same problem is developing in Western Europe, Belgium, and in that area. So right now, the U.S. is the only clean hogs in the world, disease-free hogs. So it's possible we could see the major exports of pork to both to primarily Europe and Russia, and maybe and even China. China may have to give in. It, it's, uh, you know, pork, like other commodities, is fungible. So maybe they won't buy it directly from the U.S., but if, if Europe buys from us, then frees up some other country, which will then sell to China. The net result is that China is importing more pork, and it's a finite market, so it's going to drive prices up. Yeah, true, true. Now, unfortunately, we don't have any, we don't have any pork stocks anymore. Right? <laughs> yeah, they've all been yeah. bought out, right? Like Smithfield, Smithfield was it? Smithfield, which was bought by WH. Yeah. Which is the big Chinese company. Right. It's the largest pork producer in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the only stocks that really look interesting right now are the international ones, which is hard for a lot of people to buy because they don't like to buy that foreign junk. Mm -hmm. but, but there's an attitude developing in the equity markets that U.S. stocks are expensive, and international stocks are cheaper. So mm -hmm. that's been helping them. Uh, mm -hmm. of, the, of the ag stocks, ADM, Archer Daniels, is probably the first choice still. Right. We had a stock that came public last week, Elon, and, and that looked interesting but Kerry, they, they ran it so hard last week. I mean, it was up at 1.40% really? on the IPO. So 
that was taken away from us. But we're going to see the IPOs, not IPOs, but the shedding of Dow and DuPont into two different companies. Mm-hmm. FMC is going to do its IPO of the lithium subsidiary, right. which is going to make it more of a pure ag play. So those those two stocks are of interest. Once they get everything spun off and 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 separated, mm-hmm. that's cool. What are our grains doing these days? They've been killed. Yeah, and corn. If, if there's one grain that's undervalued, it's probably corn. And the other commodity, surprisingly, Terry, I, I saw a note on it this morning from one of my readers, is is sugar. <laughs> there hasn't been a positive comment on sugar in at least three years. Mm-hmm. And and it's selling at, at dirt prices. You know, I mean, dirt is cheaper than sugar. I mean, dirt's more valuable than sugar right now. Sugar could do that for like decades. It could stay in the crapper doing nothing. And then one day people (laughs) wake up and realize, ooh, there's not enough uh, land being devoted to sugar. Because of the subsidies, you know, uh, we grow all the sugar in the United States that we shouldn't be, and it's polluting the state of Florida. And it would be nice to just say, all right, we don't need a sugar industry here. Let's get rid of it. Florida is the largest sugar producing state in the country, which probably most of you don't know. But if you drive uh, across the state from east to west or west to east and in Palm Beach County, it's actually all the sugar production for the most part is in Palm Beach County in a place that people that live in Palm Beach County don't even know exists. But there are like uh, hundreds of thousands of acres and they burn the they have to burn it before they can harvest the cane. And honestly, our sugar is inferior to the Cuban sugar. So why are we going through this exercise, Ned? Well, that's all politics. I mean, U.S. sugar sells for about 50 percent more than world sugar. World sugar is about 11 cents a pound, which is about two thirds of what U.S. sugar sells for. But you got to take a political cut out of that price and pass it on to the politicians. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. you've got to finance Washington in some way, Terry. Mm-hmm. Yeah, really, it's just uh, terrible uh, that this has been allowed to go on and faster. And it's totally a result of a bad Cuba policy. If we just gone in there, taken Castro out, Florida would be a different state. We wouldn't be polluting it now. We wouldn't have, uh, you know, anywhere near the crime and the illegal alien problem that we have from the Mariel boat lift. But, hey, I don't want to get into politics. It's just the way it is. <laughs> it's just That's the right, way it man. is. You love politics. Yeah, well, it's, uh, you know, Hollywood for the ugly. So, hey, who can complain about that? You know, it's like you don't have you don't have bikini shots in uh in politics generally. Hey, but uh, I don't know if you were aware of it, but the uh, Miss America pageant came and went and uh, it bombed because there was no uh, swimsuit competition and they can't understand why nobody, uh, nobody watched it. <laughs> I, I'm not going to touch that one. Here. All right. Well, I'm just telling you, Ned, cause I know, uh, I know you follow these things. So I mean, I, I'll admit I like swimsuits. Yeah, well, that was uh, half the reason that every guy in the country, to, to watch some uh, unattractive young lady, um, you know, quote uh, some exotic uh, mid-century Parisian poet, poetry, it's just not going to get me to turn the dial to watch it, Ned. I don't know about you. No, and I'm not into world peace. There's no money. <laughs> no, peace. no. We'll have a depression. Can you imagine that? That would, the only thing worse than world peace would be curing cancer. You know, then we, <laughs> then we would have such problems. You couldn't believe unemployment. What would all those doctors do? So, you know, we've got to keep these bad things going. Just like the carburetor that they always said, not that any, any company uses carburetors, but it would get 200 miles to a gallon and uh, it would turn water, it would run on water, so you didn't need gasoline. You know, I'm still waiting to see that one. Have you ever seen that one, Ned? 
I haven't seen it on any car I ever bought. Me neither. So is it a conspiracy or is it just uh, the technology ain't what they think it should be? I don't know. But certainly with sugar, hey, you know what? If the country ate, consumed less than half the sugar that it does now, it would not be a worse place for it, would it? No. <laughs> there's, there's a, if there's one thing you don't need to eat, it's sugar. You, you yeah. can go your whole life with that sugar. Yeah. <laughs> you really can. I'm, it's the worst thing in the world for you. It's it's. Hey, cigars, I love the taste. Cigars are probably safer than sugar. Yeah, well, hey, as long as you don't eat the cigars, you know, or inhale them, um, then you're probably okay. But, uh, yeah, sugar is the worst. And, uh, you know, and of course it goes for a low price. Maybe that's because uh, nobody's uh, using it anymore, although I doubt it. So, so anyway, Ned, I guess that's about it. So we find your work at uh, the Value View Gold Report and the AgriFood Value View, and I suggest you check it out. Uh, I just go back to 2003. You published $1,265 gold, one of the earliest major research reports documenting the impending rise in gold at that time, right? Right, right. So, so let's, uh, let's hope you're right again, you know, like a stop clock. You should be right uh, <laughs> twice every decade, yeah. right? Yeah, I'm due again. I'm, yeah, you're due. due again, <laughs> Even the silver guys. Do to be right again. Yeah, hey, you know, for us in the stop clock, uh, you know, affinity group, the stop clock association, um, <laughs> you know, hey, we're going to be right at some point, right? That's correct. That's so. correct. <laughs> we're a lot closer than we were. Hey, and we only have to be right twice. That's it. That's correct. Twice, and we can outperform every other advisor out there not that we're advisors but every other forecaster economic forecast model you only need to be right twice per decade the first That's one is true. when is the market going to go down because it does that once a decade and then the other thing is when are commodities going to go up and if you play the shorts then um, you can do that too but uh, but that's all you need to be able to figure out twice a decade trade and you'll be a winner so, because then the trend is just going to carry on until it stops. So, and that gold trend covered, it started from 99, Ned, and went to 2011, 12 years. It, uh, it continued upward with silver trailing along. So, hey, maybe this is the trade of the decade and we just don't know it yet. Uh, I'm not making any representations to that effect, but history does have a way of repeating itself and uh, rhyming, if you will. Anyway, Ned, that is it. So, hey, anything uh, brought up in this show that you want to talk about, that you want to participate in, just send me an email to kl at kerrylutz.com. If you're listening on YouTube, uh, please click that subscribe button and click the bell so you get notified. And don't forget, sign up on iTunes. You can get the show automatically delivered to your computer whenever we release an episode. Ned, we'll talk to you again real soon, man. Thanks for coming on. All right, Gary. Take care. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next.